Rahim Assalamu Alaikum So in previous lectures we studied the five properties of Fourier transform In this lecture we are going to study property number six and property number seven of the Fourier transform which are time shifting property and frequency shifting property respectively Now the time shifting property states that time shift in time domain it states that time shift in time domain is going to result in the time shift in time domain is going to result in phase shift in frequency domain so the time shifting property actually states that the time shift in time domain is going to result in phase shift in frequency domain so it means that if we have a signal g of t and we take its Fourier transform we are going to get the g of omega now if we have a delayed version of the signal or the shifted version of the signal that is g of t minus t naught then the Fourier transform of this signal is going to be g of omega multiplied by e power minus j omega t naught so this means that delaying a signal by t naught seconds does not change its amplitude spectrum but the phase spectrum however is changed by minus omega t naught so delaying a signal by t naught I am going to write over here delaying a signal by t naught is not going to change its uh, amplitude spectrum so I am going to set no effect on amplitude so the amplitude spectrum is not going to change but the phase is going to change the phase spectrum is going to change by an amount minus omega t naught Similarly, if we advance a signal, that is, if we have a g of t plus t naught, we advance that this original signal, then the Fourier transform of this signal will be equal to g of omega e power minus j omega t naught plus j omega t naught. So we are going to have minus over here, and we are going to have plus over here. So in that case, again, if we advance a signal by t naught second. Again, the amplitude is not going to change, but the phase is going to change by amount omega t naught. And this change in phase, that is the phase shift, is a linear function of frequency. So I'm going to say that this phase shift or the change in phase is going to be a linear function of frequency. By a linear function of frequency, I means that so this phase shift will be a linear function of frequency. By linear function of frequency, I mean that higher frequency components must undergo proportionally large phase shifts compared to the smaller frequency components with same time shift. So with same time shift, the higher frequency components is going to undergo larger phase shifts as compared to smaller frequency components. Now we are going to do one example to understand this time shifting property. For example, if you are asked to find the Fourier transform of g of t is equal to e power minus a into t. Now we know we can find the Fourier transform easily. This is actually equal to e power minus a t u of t plus e power a t u of minus t. Now we have found the Fourier transform of these two signals. This Fourier transform was 1 divided by a plus j omega if you remember in the previous lectures. And this Fourier transform was 1 divided by a minus j omega. So the Fourier transform of e power minus a absolutely is going to be equal to 2a divided by a square plus omega square. So let me name it as equation 1. So this is actually my g of omega. So the Fourier transform of g, g of t is going to be g of omega. This is my g of t and this is my g of omega. Now if we are asked to find the Fourier transform of for example g of t minus t naught that is if we are asked to find the Fourier transform of e power minus a t minus t naught so if we can have a look the Fourier transform of gt was g of omega this is my gt and this is my g of omega now we are asked to find the Fourier transform of g t minus t naught so that will be equal to g of omega e power minus j omega t naught so g of omega is my this thing so this Fourier transform will be equal to g of omega and multiplied by the phase shift which is e power minus j, j omega t naught so the Fourier transform is going to be equal to g of omega e power minus j omega t naught g of omega is minus this thing which is 2a divided by a square plus omega square and we are going to have e power minus j omega t naught 
So the Fourier transform of this function is going to be this thing and we have used the property of this time shifting property. So time shift in time domain has resulted in a frequency shift in has resulted in a phase shift in frequency domain and you can also plot these functions. So when you plot this we are going to get the amplitude spectrum in this case and when we plot this we are going to get the amplitude spectrum which is the same as this thing but we are also going to have the phase spectrum. So next is example 3.1 we, we have to prove that g of t minus t plus g of t plus t is equal to 2 g of omega cosine of omega t. So now if we have a function for example g of t whose Fourier transform is g of omega. By using the frequency shifting property the Fourier transform of g of t plus t is going to be equal to g of omega t power j omega t because it is shifting by shifted by capital T and g of t minus t will be equal to g of omega e power minus j omega t. So now we are going to put in this here in case of I'm, let me write it again let me take the left side which is g of t minus t plus g of t plus t. The g of t minus t is equal to g of omega e power minus j omega t and g of t plus t is equal to g of omega e power is minus and this is plus. This will be g of omega and e power because both are added so I can write it also like this e power j omega t plus e power minus j omega t because it's addition and addition of base commutative property. So now this is actually equal to 2 cosine of omega t. So I can write this over here. This is actually equal to 2 cosine of omega t. This is actually 2 of g of omega into cosine of omega t. One. So we have actually proved that and that was our proof. So we have proved that g of t minus t plus g of t plus t is, is the Fourier transform of this function is equal to, to g of omega cosine of omega t. Next is the frequency shifting property. So according to the frequency shifting property if we have a signal g of t whose again Fourier transform of g, is g of omega. Now if we shift a signal in frequency domain that is if we have a signal which is shifted in frequency domain that going to result in a signal in the original signal which is g of t and multiplied by a factor which is e power j omega naught t. Similarly if we have g of omega plus omega naught then in that case we are going to have g of t e power minus j omega naught t. So this is actually frequency shifting property. In the time shifting property we shift the time in the frequency shifting property we shift the frequency. So please note the signs of these two. The signs are different for both the cases. So this property states that multiplication of a signal by a factor of e power j omega naught t shifts the spectrum of that signal by omega naught. Now this frequency shifting property is also called modulation property. Why is it called modulation property? Because this function e power j omega naught t is not a real function. So it cannot be generated. It's not a real function and cannot be generated. So that is why usually we do not multiply this function. Usually we multiplied a sinusoidal function that is cosine of omega naught t with a signal. So we usually multiply this function and not this function because this cannot be physically generated. So that's why usually we have a function which is g of t and then that is multiplied by this sinusoidal function which is cosine of omega naught t. Now if we take the Fourier transform of this function we are going to have so we are going to have pi into g of omega minus omega naught plus pi into g of omega plus omega naught. So this property is used in modulation we are going to discuss modulation in details in coming lectures. That's all for today. Thank you.